hello uh here's our live video today from our beat studio how's everyone doing it's uh it's pretty weird to not be surrounded by people these days so i hope that you're doing well and keeping yourself busy and grounded uh and that you're participating in some of the cool online opportunities for uh getting your mind going and connecting with other people um i'm hoping that this is go is working okay good 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 i see one person is here so that means that i'm actually live this is my first time ever doing a live video so uh apologies if it's kind of wonky tech technologically um so also if you comment i will try to see it and respond to it um but it's just an adventure because i've never actually filmed one before Okay, well, welcome to my studio. Uh, as you know, I'm Kristen. I'm the executive assistant at Artbeat Studio. Love to hang out at Studio Central and participate in the different workshops there. Um, this is my place that I paint in my own home. Uh, and I'm really excited to show you something that I paint very regularly in my own home. Um, I'm a watercolor artist um, and self-taught. Uh, and one of my favorite things to paint are, is the moon or different moons from different planets. So I'll show you some examples. Uh, one of the reasons why I love painting moons as well as, ooh, my, my music just keeps on having a mind of its own. Okay. Um, the reason why I love painting moons and why I love using watercolors, uh, is that it's a, a super, super, uh, simple, um, an accessible art form and fun thing to create. Uh, I actually use probably the, the most uh, inexpensive paints and paper um, that you can find at Artist Emporium or Michaels. Uh, these are Artist Loft pan sets uh, and it's about ten dollars for, a, for a, a, a set and it will last you a really long time. The only thing is that I often run out of the white because I mix it with a lot of different things and it goes pretty quickly. So you've, if you can have an extra um, kind of palette with the colors that you need, that's a good thing to have. I also uh, buy the really inexpensive paintbrushes. My favorite are liners. So uh, paintbrushes that have a really thin um, end to them is really helpful for details as well as rounds. These are, uh, some of my favorite paintbrushes to use for watercolors because I find that it blends really, really well. I'm just seeing if anyone, okay, good, good. We have some people commenting. I see Marissa's watching. Hi, Marissa. And hi, Kevin. Awesome. Um, so before we get started with the tutorial, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of moons that I've painted with watercolors. Uh, so this is the first one, uh, or one that I've recently done. Um, and so you can see, you can add different things around the moon if you want. I kind of wanted to make a, an image that had some dried grasses and dried flowers. Um, and then in the center is the moon. As you can tell, I'm, I'm not really good at making perfect circles, um, but we'll have some fun uh, with some ways that you can do this at home. So I guess while I'm showing some examples, there are a couple tools that you need. Thank you for the heart. Um, so you will need a pencil and an eraser, uh, a bowl. If you have a bowl in your home, it can be kind of any size, but you want it to be, um, you want it to be able to fit on your page. So just keep that in mind. A, a mug could also work or a cup. Um, and then if you have watercolor paints, then that's good. If you have acrylic and you don't have watercolors, you could just uh, water it down and, and try it out for the sake of this video. Uh, and of course, paper. Uh, the paper that I love is Canson Cold Press watercolor paper. Uh, I usually just buy this exact uh, brand and type of paper in the different sizes that I need. I find that it's just really, really nice for, for blending and the texture is really great. It picks up the paint really well. So if you can find those items before we start, that's great. 
Uh, and then I'll also show you some prints that I've made of different moons just so that you can see that there's literally the world is your oyster. If you uh, paint moons, you can do tons of different things. Um, so these are actually, these are Saturn's moons. So I just looked up and it's a little bit uh, glossy because it's a, a print on photo paper. But I just looked up uh, and researched uh, different moons of different planets and then had a fun time kind of painting those. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different colors. Uh, planetary moons are really, really neat. Um, here are some other prints of different moons that I've done. Don't really know what planet this blue moon comes from, but you can kind of just also make up things uh, where artists, we don't have to be exactly realistic all the time. Uh, these are Jupiter's moons, also really shiny paper. And then I've also done um, like the moon, the phases of the, the Earth's moon, uh, which is really fun. And that one's a little bit more time consuming than what we're going to do today, but um, equally as simple and, and totally uh, doable for teaching yourself. Okay, so do people have all of their items? I'm hoping so. We have three viewers. Thank you for being here. Okay. So this is kind of the hard part because I have to figure out how to film while also kind of demonstrating and showing you. Right now I have an awesome setup uh, with my recipe box here, I'll show you. Hmm. Oh, here. It's my little recipe box as being our, our friend. Uh, oops. I am now lighting things up. Oh boy. Okay. There we go. Back to normal. So, uh, for your moon, we're going to do one really big full moon today. Uh, and what we're going to do, how we're going to start here is, uh, take a bowl from your home, uh, flip it upside down and toss it in the middle of the paper. You can just kind of eyeball it. Um, any size will do. Uh, I would pick kind of a bigger one if you're learning, because then you can really see how the different um, techniques work with watercolors, um, as well as it's super fun to play with. Uh, so next you're gonna take your pencil and you're just gonna trace the outside of the bowl. Uh, make sure that you, you don't press in too, too hard because at the end, uh, well, at least personally, I don't like to see the, uh, the pencil marks and, um, and sometimes the watercolor will cover it, but sometimes you'll, you'll be able to see through it a little bit. So I would say just go lightly. So we're going to kind of try and do this now while I hold the camera. Also, hopefully you have a better pencil than me or a pencil sharpener at home, which I don't. Okay, so now, voila, you have a, a somewhat perfect circle. At least it's better than when I hand draw them. Um, and then now we're going to mix some colors. So like I said before, you can really be adventurous with what kind of, what kind of moon you want. I don't think that it has to be super realistic. Um, today I think I'm going to do uh, like a purple or a maroon moon. So let's see here. Also the one nice thing about watercolors as well, uh, which is a little bit different than acrylic, is that um, it's not super messy. So if I um, get a little bit of watercolor on the table, it's really easy to wipe off versus um, acrylic paint. Uh, in this little area of my table, I have some gold splatters of acrylic paint that I, I'd have to really chip off. So it's it's also a nice a nice way to paint if you have kids. Um, I love painting with my nephews with watercolors because there's really no worries. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of mix a couple different colors together. Um, what you're gonna want to do at this time because we're gonna be doing different. Uh, shades within the moon is paint like pick about three different shades that you want to go together 
for example, in this moon, uh, you can see that there was some base color, whether it was the peach or kind of the light green. And then there was some darker splotches on top um, and some different details that are within that. So I would say pick three colors. I think I want my kind of splotches to be a nice purple color. And then I'm just gonna do a light gray for the bottom. Uh, you can also see that I really don't keep my palette super clean. Um, I kind of find it like a fun adventure if I mix different colors together between paintings. So to each their own with that. And I think I'm gonna do this really cool blue here too. I like that. Okay. Marissa, are you painting along here? I'm gonna actually add some of this pink to the gray. It's gonna be like a really neat kind of ultraviolet moon, I think. So, uh, for folks who have painted with watercolors before, you know that there are a couple different techniques that you can do. Um, if I were to take the paint right now and just go straight onto the paper, that technique is called wet on dry. Um, that I, is what I actually usually use uh, for my watercolor paintings. However, if I'm doing a big surface like a moon where I wanna see a lot of blending happening, um, I will always use wet on wet technique, which means that you're gonna actually just paint it with water beforehand, anywhere that you want the, the paint to touch. Um, so it's kind of fun. You can kind of do a little bit of a, I'm sorry if I'm shaky here, um, a little bit of an invisible coat um, underneath. You'll find the different consistencies with, with your water and your paint of how much you like. Um, I find that there's a little bit of a danger in really loading on the water on your first layer uh, because sometimes that could cause cracking afterwards. If there's too much liquid on the paper, it won't dry and settle uh, perfectly into the, into the paper. Studio Central is talking to me. I wonder if I'm on the Studio Central account right now or if I'm on my own personal account. So as you see, I'm just putting one layer of water. The other thing that will happen if you don't use enough water is that it will dry by the time you get to the end of this um, first coat, and then you kind of have to redo it because the purpose of the wet on wet technique is that it's actually gonna blend really nicely because it's already coated in liquid. And the other reason why we mix the paints already, one is that it kind of gets your mind going of what your palette is gonna be for the for the moon. Uh, but secondly, you don't actually have that much time in between this first coat and actually um, applying your color. So this is where we'll apply the first layer. So usually I would use the lightest color that you have. So I have like a, a violet, I have kind of a burgundy, and then I have a light gray. So I'm gonna use the light gray right now. And basically, we're just going to paint in the, the circle here. Uh, kind of watch also if you make a little splatter. Usually you can just wipe it away easily. But uh, I would watch that you stay within the lines that you've painted. Um, if you kind of break the seal of where the water is, it, it will... Uh, f kind of like float off your surface that you're wanting to paint. For example, here, uh, the paint is all stopping um, at the edge of where the water is, which is another great reason to use wet on wet technique. Okay. So again, just use your first layer here. And the purpose for this layer is just to try and get a, a base for your moon. 
You'll also see that because you have the water already laid down in the foundation, that things are gonna blend really naturally. You might have to make a little bit more of your colors. I keep going here. I gotta say, this is the first time I've painted a moon with just one hand. So thanks for being along for this moment. Okay, so you can see it's even already drying a little bit. So I just add a little water to make sure that that surface stays wet. Okay. Another thing that I try and do, if there are going to be lines that aren't blended in, uh, just to try and uh, create the kind of illusion that this is actually a sphere that's 3D, uh, you can do that by just starting in the middle and uh and gradually um gradually creating lines that uh kind of are parallel with the circle which kind of helps it look a little bit more 3d not totally okay so now is my favorite part i have my full surface painted it's still wet if it's not wet for you i would suggest uh just adding a little water to your brush and then um going over top of your uh, already painted surface, you really want it to have some um, some ability to blend with your next color. Uh, so this is the part where you you will take uh, your next color. Doesn't matter which one, whichever you prefer. You can also mix and add colors throughout. So I think I'm going to go with this guy here. And I am going to make some uh, little splatters that are actually going to spread out and those will act as the craters in the moon and the shadows in the moon. So you do this by simply tapping down with your brush where you want uh, that uh, shadow or crater to be. As you can see, I'm going to try and get it so it's not too blurry for you. It actually like spreads really beautifully on its own. And all I'm doing is just a simple tap. The reason why that's happening is because we have that um, that background behind. Um, and then we're using enough water with our paint that it's it's causing that to spread really lovely. Most of the time I will look at actual pictures of planets or the moon for this part, um, just so you can kind of get an idea of where to put your shading. But again, I don't think that the Earth's moon is purple, so I'm just creating my own, my own moon here. Pretty cool how that's all blending, hey? Just on its own. That's why I think watercolors are kind of magic. You kind of just like facilitate the process for your paints to make all the beautiful um, images in your piece. And you really can go as minimal or as um, extra as you want with, with your colors that you're adding onto your moon. Sometimes it's nice to kind of merge two different um, sections of this extra color here. Okay, so a fun thing is happening right here that always happens um, when you're creating a piece that has a section that um, has the wet on wet uh, and then everything else is just paper that's dry. So it's going to pool right there where it's sealed. So the, the water's not going to come out unless that's broken. 
So what I often like to do, it's also happening up here, is I kind of just pick up the piece and allow the, that color to kind of move around the perimeter of the circle. It will cause the rest of your piece to kind of droop down in that direction, but um, it usually has a cool effect. So you don't want to shake your paper. If you shake your paper, it might break that seal and then your color is going to go drip down your piece. Okay, so looks like we have our first uh, layer, our second layer of kind of shading um, and the, the craters. And now I'm going to add a detail layer, which usually keeps it quite dynamic. I'll show you this piece again, which is a good example. Um, the first layer on here would have been this peach, and then the second would have been probably this green. And you can see uh, that the top layer is the one that uh, is the most prominent. So that's why I kept my kind of ultraviolet purple for that. Uh, so that's what you're going to see the most, so make sure you like the color that you're using. So again, we're going to get a bunch of that color, and then we're going to go on top of the piece. If you wait too long, again, your moon will get dry and you just have to add more water. If I trusted my laptop to not blast music I would try and play some but hopefully you have some on at home As you can see there, the three different colors now are blending really nicely. And it has quite like a, kind of a mystical look to it. When it dries, so you'll be able to see that even better. And I'm seeing that like my, my moon is quite light and that's not exactly what I had kind of envisioned. So I'm gonna add another color now. It, it's pretty, but it's it's a little plain for me. So I'm going to go in. What color should I do? I think I'm going to do like a kind of a more darker blue navy type of look here. I'm very excited to see your moons too. Okay, maybe a little green in there. All right, so I have to be careful here because this is going to show up really prominently. Adding a little water even on top helps it spread even better. But I don't want it to go off the page. One interesting technique as well that I have only recently started doing with my moons is that uh, in general I, I tend to go lightest to darkest uh, for that layered look, but I found that if you add a little bit of white or light gray on top of your dark colors right at the end, it adds a really cool kind of cloudy look. I also like to try and keep some darkness on the on the edges, although this moon didn't really have that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit on this corner here. Ooh. Or we can let gravity do it. Oh, 
doesn't want to go around. So I'm just going to keep one side of this moon um, having a little bit of a shaded edge so that it looks a little bit more realistic and a little bit more dimensional. But what you don't want is to do kind of like that uh, wet on dry technique now if your, your moon has dried because you want it to be all consistent uh, texture. So just add some good water. Make sure that it's all blended in a bit. It's a lot of tapping. Okay, so everyone's moon's gonna look different. I've never created one that looks the same fully, but you can see that this is a good start of getting that circle that you want and that really kind of cool blended. Uh, look uh, after and I think my phone is gonna die so I might have to just post a picture of it afterwards um, but what you want to do once this is totally dry is you want to put some details so it's really pretty how it is right now but to make it really look like a moon um, I often put some nice little like uh, craters in there with some line details sometimes I'll do little dots that just kind of make it look really interesting from afar um, what are some examples of other things that you could do? Um, sometimes putting even, uh, some like, uh, dark dots on your lighter parts of the piece can look really interesting and neat. These ones I try to really mimic, um, what actual moons from, uh, from Saturn looks like. And then you can also, after you paint your piece, uh, you can put some details around it, like greenery or, or florals. Um, this moon, I think, is going to have a lot of little dots on it. But you can see here that I accidentally broke this uh, seal, and so my paint has now dripped down. Uh, which, I'll show you one kind of final technique. If you want to get rid of a mistake with watercolors, usually, unless it's um too dark you can kind of just add water to it uh, and then just tap and kind of try and brush that color away it's going to still add a little bit of a shade here but you won't be able to see it as as strongly as you could before uh awesome so that is our live demonstration from home today I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm excited to see your moons. Um, and thanks for joining us. We also have uh, an Instagram challenge every day. And your Instagram challenge today is on the Art Beat Studio uh, Instagram page. If you hashtag Art Challenge WPG, we'll make sure to, to share it. And uh, I hope that you have a really good rest of your evening. Thanks for joining.